this video, we're going to look at the 23 to nothing run that the Clippers had on Sunday in Phoenix. A 23 to nothing run obviously is not normal. It doesn't happen every day in the NBA. While there are more blowouts this year in the NBA than normal, this isn't a normal occurrence. These runs typically don't happen, but we're going to look at it. And here it starts with Phoenix trying to top block against Paul George, denying him to go over the top of the Zubat screen. So instead, George curls under it, and in doing so, runs the defender into it, flowing right into a pick and roll with the Vizu Zubats. There's the screen for the pick and roll. George is going to get downhill against Dario Saric, who is an undersized five man, and he throws an in and out dribble at Saric, then he goes up strong using his superior body control and length to finish a very tough shot around the rim to get the Clippers started on this run. It's not just offense that matters in runs like these, it's defense too. And like I said, you do get a little bit fortunate sometimes with the defense or the offense or what have you. Now on this play, we're actually going to see how the Clippers are able to manifest things. Luke Kennard gets beat slightly backdoor by Devin Booker here. But Kennard stays in good position when Campaign starts his drive, gives good rim protection and solid defense. And Campaign comes down, touches his, touches his foot to the floor, which is a travel here. You're not allowed to do that. And the Clippers get their first stop and then a defensive sequence that starts this 23 to nothing run for them. The Clippers do tend to play a little bit of drop coverage, not a ton all the time. Sometimes they switch, but with Zubats, they play drop coverage. And here, as we see, Zubats is in drop coverage. Now, it's not low drop, but it still is drop. Lou Williams gets over the top of the screen really well to contest this campaign three-pointer. It's a 34% shot probability. He misses, and Luke Kennard does a good job of corralling this rebound. One of the ways that you can beat a blitzing or hedging, trapping, whatever you want to call a solid defense, is to slip the roll. And here, Avita Zubats is going to slip on the roll, and because of this, it gives Paul George an angle on the pass. Zubats here has the option to go up with this against a smaller defender, but he short roll passes to the weak side corner, which is Reggie Jackson. And we're going to see Luke Kennard sneak out the backside here along the baseline as the defense isn't paying attention. Jackson crosses over former Detroit Pistons teammate Langston Galloway, and as he gets downhill, Luke Kennard, who snuck out the backside, is wide open in the corner. This is a 43% shot probability for a great three-point shooter, and Luke Kennard knocks it down to push the Clippers' lead to 10. Now this is another instance of the Clippers playing drop coverage, but what we're actually going to see here is what's called low drop coverage. Um, this is the final defensive possession for the Clippers in the first quarter. Here comes the screen by Sarge. Zubats is in low drop. Campaign is not an expert pull-up three-point shooter, but watch Reggie Jackson. The second Payne picks up his dribble, Jackson immediately sprints back to Sarge to contain this. Because of that, Sarge cuts, but Payne doesn't expect Sarge to cut, so when he passes the ball as hard as he does, it goes right through Sarge's hands. An excellent effort by Paul George here to hustle on this, which forces them to pick up the ball and save the Clippers some time here. All right, so here's the ensuing offensive possession in the quarter. You know, Paul George made this happen by hustling. Evita Zubac sets a screen at the nail. This allows Paul George to get free on the catch. As he catches, he's already rotating his hips to get parallel to the hoop. When he turns and fires, it's not a bad look. It's not a high quality look, but it's about as best as you're gonna do in this situation. And he knocks this one down to cap off a great first quarter for him and start the night well. And here's the sideline angle. Look where he catches it. As he extends the shoot, the defender isn't in poor position. He's in solid position, but it doesn't matter. And Paul George knocks it down for the Clippers. This is the first offensive possession of the second quarter for the Clippers, and it's going to be entered into Zubats in the post, who is then going to execute a handoff with Lou Williams. It's a nice screen by Zubats against Javon Carter, which allows Lou to get isolated against DeAndre Ayton. Now, Lou misses the shot, but because Aiden has to help on this specific shot by Lou, it leaves Zubats free to roam the offensive glass against no true big. He gets it. He finds Paul George with a nice pass. Paul George has a 38% shot probability on this, but he's such a good shooter, he knocks this one down, and the Clippers now have a 16-point lead. What's the saying that goes, folks? Good defense leads to even better offense, and we're about to see that on this play. Clippers are on defense here. And I really like the way the Clippers communicate here defensively. Everyone's switching, everyone's talking, everyone's pointing. Nothing looks too crazy. Luke Kennard defends against this cut by Javon Carter into the paint. And this is going to lead into an eight and a handoff with Cam Johnson that Reggie Jackson does really well to get over the top of. Lou Williams digs down at the nail to prevent Johnson from continuing downhill. And then gets back out to Langston Galloway to force him to put the ball on the floor. 
Chris Paul then kicks the ball back to Cam Johnson at the top, who then drives. Now, Cam Johnson isn't a great ball handler, so when he goes behind the back here, he actually loses control of the ball a little bit. And Paul George sneaks right in to tip it away to himself to start a fast break. And this is a great position for the Clippers to be in. And Paul George does an excellent job here of driving right into the defender and waiting to the last minute to pass in order to give Luke Kennard the best chance possible. Kennard gets fouled here, goes up strong, and has a nice finish and a nice little three-point play to get the Clippers off on the right foot. Be prepared because you're about to hear me say the phrase good job quite a few times on this specific clip. It's a 14-0 run for the Clippers at this point. And Javon Carter brings the ball up, but they're going to try to get Chris Paul the ball. Reggie Jackson does a good job of going right under on the handoff action to not get caught up in, in the screen. And then over the top, Aiton dives to the rim, but Zubas does a good job of patrolling. And Kennard digs down, but does a good job of getting back to Langston Galloway to contest this jumper. Zubas is then going to do an even better job boxing out Aiton and allowing Paul George to crash the weak side. Even when things go haywire offensively for you, you still need to be able to do your job. This is a good screen by Avita Zubas to start us off here for pick and roll. But Phoenix does a great job of digging down and forcing Paul George to kind of get flustered and stuff. George then kicks it out to Zubats, and they reset a little bit with Reggie Jackson at the top, but they also flow right into another screen and roll action. Luke Kennard is open on the weak side wing, but Jackson kind of does a little bit of a smart thing here. He puts his defender in jail. This is called putting your defender in jail. Keeps him on the hip drives, make sure the big can't help on this, and drops in a nice little floater here to push the Clippers lead over 20. This sequence is a fantastic defensive possession by Lou Williams. He's in top lock and the screen hits him in the back, but he's going to roll right over the top of the screen to stay connected and then darts under on the handoff to make sure that Galloway gets no space to do anything offensively. The ball gets reset to Chris Paul and Galloway is going to clear out to the near side corner. But watch Javon Carter in the far side corner here. When Paul drives and gets the defense's attention, Carter back cuts. But Ivica Zubas does a great effort and great job here of cutting down this effort for Carter. And the pass goes to Galloway in the corner. But Lou Williams fantastically jumps at Galloway, but on the side as not to foul him. Galloway already in his motion to shoot, drops the ball and he picks it up for a turnover. A lot of a team's offense is derived from creating mismatches and things that the Clippers did in this game enabled them to get mismatches in the favor of Paul George time and time again. And we're going to see that on this play right here. This screen by Paul George, the only design of this is to get Langston Galloway switched onto George and to get Jay Crowder off of him. Crowder's more physical. George is able to just rise and fire over Galloway whenever he wants, as we're about to see. So George has the ball against Galloway in isolation. And as he begins to drive, we're actually going to notice he hard plants with his right foot to go into his shooting motion. And as he leaps, Galloway isn't in a position to adequately defend this. It's a 44% shot probability, and Paul George knocks it down. A lot of fans give Reggie Jackson some grief, but I gotta say, it's plays like these, these effort plays, this hustle, this awareness that actually really helps the team. This play is called the Spain pick and roll. There's the first part of it. DeAndre Ayton sets the screen and rolls. Jay Crowder back picks Ayton's man, but look at Reggie Jackson here. He digs down on Ayton, and as Jay Crowder pops, Jackson's going to make the effort, even colliding with Zubats here, makes the effort to get out to Jay Crowder and contest this shot. It's a 34% shot probability, but Jackson's effort here helps things. Great box out by Zubats, and the Clippers get the rebound. All right, this is what can happen when you set a high screen and roll. Vita Zubats, high screen, allows Luke Kennard to get downhill right to DeAndre Ayton. And Kennard's going to feed Zubats. The pass is a little behind him, but great job by Zubats to catch this. And he's then going to pivot as he gets swarmed to find Reggie Jackson open in the corner. Now, this is not going to be a great shot. It's going to be 36% shot probability. But Reggie Jackson is such a good catch-and-shoot option for the Clippers that he's comfortable taking the shot and he splashes it in. Playing good defense is all about having five guys on a string defensively, and this play basically exemplifies that for the Clippers as far as they're concerned. Paul George is going to give the ball up to eight, and then he runs a nice little rub screen action with Jay Crowder, but the Clippers guards are going to just switch this. There's not going to be any miscommunication. We're just going to switch this. Paul George then dives under the handoff, 
forcing Devin Booker to his left hand, which isn't as strong as his right. Still very good, obviously, but you know. Mikael Bridges cuts baseline because Lou Williams turns his back to help on the drive. But look at the Clippers defenders. They all swarm to this ball. Paul George, Evita Zubats, they get a block and they force Phoenix to have to take the ball baseline out of bounds. At the beginning of this video, I said, 23 nothing runs don't happen without your team being very fortunate in several aspects of this. And we're about to see this. This is the final play, and we're about to see very fortunate stuff. Reggie Jackson does a great job of getting over these screens to force Chris Paul to the left, and Chris Paul gets careless with the ball. Paul George reaches in and pokes it away, and he starts the fast break for the Clippers, which is going to end with a Luke Kennard layup. You know, the Clippers had a 23 nothing run. It's the big reason why they won this game, and it deserved a deeper look, and they played great offense and defense in this stretch.